Hello, I am over you from Vietnam. So it will be a little hard for you to understand. I do not use chat GPT to correct grammar errors. Because it is suspected of stealing ideas and content. I will discuss cold electricity, ether, origin and nature of humans, history of Tartaria. I have learned about cold electricity, ether field physics, suppressed technologies before. However, due to limited language skills, I only know a little bit. On the other hand, most English-speaking Americans and Britons do not know or understand the ether physics implied in the works of Charles implied in the works of Charles Proteus Steinmetz, Nikola Tesla, Joseph John Thompson, Walter Russell, etc. After several years of studying ether technology, free energy, and Tartarian history, when I rewatched an old video about cold electricity technology, I found many new things and new discoveries from the old video. I will briefly talk about cold electricity and Tesla's technology associated with ether. Then I will mainly talk about the conspiracy related to the origin and nature of humans in Tartarian history, including the doubts before and after the collapse of the old world order, but hidden in official history. First of all, I will talk about the phenomenon of the human body conducting a very good type of electricity, which is cold electricity. On the contrary, the grid electricity used for machinery and engines is dangerous to humans. Cold electricity is mentioned by scholars as originating from Nikola Tesla's technology, namely the Tesla transformer, incorrectly called the Tesla coil. Some scholars say that cold electricity originated from ancient Belgium, called Belgian cold electricity. People often see fluorescent lamps glowing when placed near the secondary coil of the Tesla coil. Scholars believe that it is due to radiant energy that makes the fluorescent lamp glow, although there is no closed circuit connection for the two ends of the fluorescent tube. However, if the output of the secondary coil of the Tesla coil is directly extracted, and connected through the human body, the human body is like an electric conductor. That is cold electricity running through the human body. Note that most Tesla coils are not dangerous at high frequencies. If the spark gap is placed on the side of the secondary coil, we have another variant of the Tesla transformer, and it is still considered a Tesla coil as the drawing I mentioned. The most important thing I want to say here is that there is no electron moving or oscillating on the wire during the conduction of electricity. This so-called electron is nothing more than a hoax created to prevent logical progress in electrical theory and consumed by pure mathematical imagination. Electron has no use in any practical electrical engineering work. What is called electric current is actually the movement of a Faraday tube between two conductors. It is the movement from the source to the load consuming electricity. The movement of this Faraday tube in the dielectric medium of free space has a velocity of c, the speed of light. This is the genuine theory that industrial corporations used in the early 20th century. However, this theory is not taught in public schools. You can read this theory in the article Electric Current and Physics Genuine Ether Electricity at the Overunity Electricity blog for more details. With these simple definitions of the Faraday force tube and its important properties, we can begin to explain the phenomena of radio waves today. For example, if radio waves are electromagnetic waves as described by Maxwell, then why do they pass through walls to receive and transmit signals to mobile phones? Remember that the distance between atoms in solids is too narrow for the amplitude of radio waves to pass through. So why are they easily transmitted and received? In fact, radio waves are transmitted through iron and steel, walls, and then restored because the Faraday force tubes are still connected to the atoms of solid state matter. The Faraday force tube is also called the electric field line, it is invisible to the naked eye. A characteristic of the Faraday force tube, also known as the electric field lines, is that it never ends in free space, and if it ends, it will enter the atom. In the ether field, if the ether is manifested in the free space state, then there must be electric field lines in the state of losing inertia, creating a secondary state of magnetic field. Free space is the state of ether with a diluted electric capacity. The mathematics of ether electricity also says, the smaller the space, the higher the capacitance. The ether theory was once because of the initial wrong definition of ether, then went to the pointless experiment to find ether. Then the elimination of ether based on Einstein's new view was plagiarized from the Lorentz transformation. Electric lines of force, or Faraday tubes, also explain the phenomenon of cold electricity, which is the transmission of electricity without wires, or transmission of electricity by one wire. The fluorescent lamp glows when placed near the secondary coil of the Tesla coil because there are oscillations due to the displacement of electric lines of force, and the magnetic effect produced is only secondary, which we call electromagnetic, which we call electromagnetic waves. These electric lines of force or Faraday tubes pass through the atoms of the gas in the fluorescent lamp. Here, once again, the electric lines of force are obstructed, creating a magnetic effect, and emitting light waves at the inert gas atoms in the fluorescent tube. 
Similar to the incandescent lamp, the human body allows the Faraday tubes to pass through, leading from the feet to the fingers. When touching one pole of the light bulb, provided that the other pole is connected to a thin wire or metal, it will glow. This is because the Faraday force tubes have displacement when connected to the atoms of the filament of the light bulb. The metal or wire connected to the other pole is still an open circuit. If the cold electricity is strong enough, there is no need to add more wire. It is added to the weak cold electricity because these electric lines of force passing through the atoms need a place to return to a static state. Originally, copper wire or thin metal bar is a static place with electric lines of force passing through it. That is the static state to start generating the electric lines of cold electricity. Cold electricity does not harm or shock the human body because it is the electromagnetic radiation transmitted vertically into the Faraday force tube, while normal electricity from the grid is horizontal radiation. There has been no experiment to replace humans with pigs or other animals to transmit electricity in that experiment. However, I think that humans are the best carriers of this electricity, and that humans are essentially electric. I say this is fine since ether physics says that everything is electricity, and that raw matter is frozen light. Or it can be said specifically that atoms are autonomous ether fields made of ether but converged with extremely high energy vortices, which are also extremely high energy light, creating pulses of ether in response and accelerating each other towards the counter space. Now I will talk about the doubts about the origin of humans and the quest for the truth about Tartaria. According to the Quran and David Ewing Jr.'s comments on it, the origin of humanity is recently related to electrical beings. I am not sure how directly related it is, but it must be that humans have paths similar to Faraday's force tubes. It is the bioelectric lines of force, which according to Eastern Taoism are called meridians that transmit three types of immaterial entities, which are three treasures, called Jing, Qi, Shen. Recently, there has been a book that briefly studies the clues about the connection between humans and electricity. The book is called We Are Electricity. Depending on the definition established as the basis for a certain theory, we can then deduce we are electricity. As stated in ether physics, everything is electricity, so there must be certain characteristics to affirm that we are electricity. According to the cold electricity transmission experiment, there are tubes of force running along the body like the meridians in the body. The practitioners of esoteric Chinese martial arts today all rely on the movement of qi along those meridians. The same goes for qigong. They all rely on the methodical movement of qi from the settings of the invisible meridian system in the body guided by their master. According to ancient records, many ancient Chinese martial artists can emit special abilities, emitting energy over long distances, called palm force. They can fly like birds without wings, called lightness skill. Many people think that this is an Eastern legend. But why do Western countries also produce animated films that emit palm force from a distance? I think that this is a skill of, and they passed it on to the Chinese and Vietnamese people quite a lot. All the magical martial arts in Chinese movies are actually the martial arts of the Knights Templar of the past. Scholars, monks and Jesuits plagiarized and transformed them into Chinese martial arts works in the Qing dynasty. For the following reasons. 1 slash in the book Tartar City by David Ewing Jr., there is a mention of besieged castles, which is also the war between the declining Tartarian Empire and the Church in Europe. 2 slash ancient China did not exist as their history wrote. The history of ancient China is a forgery of ancient China is a forgery of events in Europe. That is the result of research by David Ewing Jr. and Anatoly Fomenko. 3 slash during the Qing dynasty, literary works began to be rewritten in Chinese, which to this day cannot be traced to who was the real author, although the author's name was mentioned. Who are the martial arts works of this period talking about? The fall and decline of Tartaria or the Kingdom of God brought about the migration of the Knights Templar. The last migration before the complete collapse was in the area of China, Vietnam, and neighboring areas. This raises doubts about the true origin of the Chinese and Vietnamese. It is possible that they were the rear guards for the War of the Knights Templar and the church organization in Europe. When the people were discovered to be supporting them, they fled all over Asia. A typical example is the migration to Saigon and Vietnam in the 17th century. This is just my speculation. The last thing I want to mention is the relationship between cold electricity, human health, longevity, and the conspiracy to implant chips into the body to control humanity. You see, humans easily receive and transmit electricity, the type of electricity called cold electricity. This is the secondary type of electricity in today's radio technology and telephone waves. If there is a chip that emits this type of electricity, to enhance human health, and at the same time control behaviors and minds, then it is completely possible. With a small chip powered by wireless charging, or taking charging energy from the human body, 
the big forces can control humans in the new world order. According to the information revealed, it is a conspiracy theory. However, if it is confirmed that human health depends on electricity, then it is now a real conspiracy, not a theory. This conspiracy shows that humans will be exhausted in health, then there is an agreement to implant a chip to increase life expectancy. This shows that human DNA is capable of receiving the signal of the Faraday force tube, changing its main function, and increasing human life expectancy. Many doubts in Tartarian historical investigations show that humans once had a lifespan of thousands of years. Writer Susan Ertz once said a meaningful sentence, millions long for immortality who don't know what to do on a rainy Sunday afternoon. Also following this conspiracy, we are being limited by strong radio waves similar to 5G, which limit the function of DNA, along with vaccines that promise a future of reduced life expectancy, poor health. Then people will have to kneel down and beg for chip implants. The media is activating information about zombie people as a joke. Will people without chip implants be like zombies in the near future? It seems that many people think that chip implants and zombie people are just a joke. However, think about what they gain by promoting these things? Who is really stupid? So, what I mentioned will warn of a future of poor health, or contracts to implant chips into the human body and our descendants. What should you do? Be honest with the dogmas that are wronging you, and seek the truth for yourself first, then find solutions to help your loved ones, and then help your fellow human beings. Thanks to David Ewing Jr. for giving me the information. By the way, I mentioned his two recent books Secrets of the 33 Degrees and Secrets of the Kabbalah. The book is probably very good. And perhaps those are the two favorite books of the author in the recent period. If you are looking for historical truth for your mind, these two books will give you a lot of secret information, and also serve as a solid basis and important clues to investigate the following truths. In addition, the problem quoted in the quote, millions long for immortality who don't know what to do on a rainy Sunday afternoon. Bye. Susan Ertz will be solved in the future by reclaiming what has been lost. Humanity has been enslaved a lot. That is the hidden and censored history. The great powers have taken away the lifespan of humans, and the future is a deceitful compromise. If the truth is known, at least the individual will reclaim what has been lost. Be careful of scholars who are G-theory or the Silicon era. Because they may be brainwashing humanity, in order to serve the compromise of implanting chips in the future. They will make humans have a lifespan of 10 to 30 years and then people will come to kneel and beg for chips. This is a conspiracy theory. But think about it and verify it. Question, could it be that we were brought here to make money work by faith? In a video about the book The 33 Degrees Secret by David Ewing Jr. himself, he talks about the end of the world in relation to the numbers 33 and 666, 616, and who wrote the book of Reem, and who wrote the book of Revelation. Goodbye. Good luck.